Welcome to Managing AML. I am Dr. Richard Stone. I am frequently asked, should all fit newly diagnosed patients with AML receive three plus seven based induction therapy? Well, that's a very interesting question and one that I would never have been asked a few years ago. Why would I have been asked that? Because it was pretty much of a reflex by leukemia treaters that if a patient was fit of any age, even up to age 75 or 80 in some cases, and if they had AML and it wasn't acute promosthetic leukemia, they would receive three days of an anthracycline, such as donorubicin, and seven days of continuous infusional cytarabine, and that was the story. And we would try to get them into uh, remission. Remission would be measured by morphologic analysis of their bone marrow and blood uh, approximately four to six weeks after the therapy. We would want to see less than 4% blast in the marrow. We would want to see recovery of normal hematopoiesis. As it turns out, not all fit patients with 3 plus 7 benefit from 3 plus 7. And I would like to call people's attention to a group of patients with intrinsically resistant disease, namely those with complex cytogenetics and or a 3Q26 cytogenetic abnormality, and or a translocation between chromosomes 6 and 9 and or a TP53 mutation. These patients have a low response rate to 3 plus 7 chemotherapy. Moreover, they have a very poor long-term uh, event-free survival with 3 plus 7 chemotherapy. These types of intrinsically resistant patients simply don't respond well to chemotherapy. Now, this is controversial, but I would consider giving such patients hypomethylene agent-based therapy. And the data for that comes from a couple of sources. One is the AML001 trial conducted in Europe led by Hervé Dombré, which randomized patients who were older, who had lower white counts, less than 15,000 at diagnosis, to either azacitidine for seven days every month or what was called conventional care therapy, which could include a pre-selected choice between supportive care, low dose RSC or three plus seven. Now most of the patients didn't get three plus seven, but in that trial, people did ju just about as well, if not a bit better, by having been r randomized to the hypomethylene agent therapy. So that was one sort of piece of data supporting the use of hypomethylene th agent therapy, even in people who might be considered fit for three plus seven. The second piece of data, which I really find intriguing, was recently published in the New England Journal of Medicine by Dr. Welch of Washington University in St. Louis. He treated a bunch of patients with AML with 10 days of decitabine. And he noted that the response rate of people who had TP53 mutations, generally considered to be a horrible prognosis, was virtually 100%. Now these people weren't all cured. Some of them were able to go to transplant, some were not. But it seems like lower dose therapy might be better or at least no worse than the standard three plus seven. So that's just something to consider for our highly adverse biological type of AML patients, almost regardless of their age, but these are more common in older adults. Secondly, I'd just like to call your attention to a very interesting new drug called CPX351, or Vixios, which uh, is going to hopefully be approved in a certain subset of AML patients. That subset will be AML patients who've had a history of a prior myelodysplastic syndrome, or who have bad chromosomes, or dysplasia in the marrow at the time the AML is diagnosed. This is generally referred to as secondary AML, though it's a bit more complicated than that. CPX351 is a is donorubicin and RSC, but it's enclosed in a lamellar uh, capsule, in a sense, which allows a fixed molar ratio to be delivered, hopefully to the leukemic stem cells. A phase three trial reported by Jeff Lancet uh, at uh, ASH about a year and a half ago showed that CPX351 was superior in terms of overall survival than standard 3 plus 7 in this specified group of AML patients. So I think that's going to be something we're going to have to think about for uh, this subset of AML patients in the very near term future. Again, this is Donnarubus and RSC, but it's not 3 plus 7. It's a new way to deliver the same drugs. So in summary, I would support a careful analysis of the intrinsic biologic leukemia risk of the patient at the time of diagnosis, and maybe considering not three plus seven for people with a really bad risk, and in the near future, perhaps considering three, three Vixios or CPX351 for patients with secondary AML. Thank you for viewing this activity.